Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the CR Lawrence. This is their part number V1E074CH. I'm tempted to think it's supposed to be VIE. Sometimes they will get into some trouble with some of their letters. Um, their catalog will show it as a V1E but it's really VIE for Vienna. It's 074, it's an 074 hinge. It's a Vienna hinge and an 074 application uh, in a CH finish, which is polished chrome. So first of all, we're gonna go over this hinge. You're going to get a dimensional drawing of the item along with a template that is going to be in here. So you'll get a cut sheet and then you're, see there's the V1E again, V1. You'll get your template and your cut sheet. And they have it two pages trying to determine the difference between both of these templates. Oh, okay, yeah, it's two different applications. They have a short backplate version. However, the templates don't. Oh, they are different. Okay, so you do certainly need to know which model you're using. Wall mount hinge, wall mount hinge, short back plate. Um, so the difference is going to be the clearance that you're achieving between the door and the jam, or the uh, the door and the wall, I suppose. Uh, it would be the door and the wall. One is going to give you, uh, the dimensional properties will change. Indicated here or here. Now that material is not important to look at with me holding it up because we have it listed down below um, this video where you can pull up the product information and both of the cut sheets. So they're both there. The bottom line is they're included with the work so that you can send the material to your fabricator and get the material fabricated correctly. Now the box is going to give you the hinge and they're sold as each. Fasteners. The screws and the Allen wrench that you'll need, this hinge is including Allen wrench style screws rather than Phillips style, a set of Vienna gaskets. Let's take a look at this hinge. Now being CR Lawrence, that means it's going to be made of solid brass, which is going to afford an incredibly high quality finish. And this hinge weighs about 1.9 pounds, by the way. Okay. Now let's take a closer look at the hinge. So I've got the hinge pulled out here. Let's get it out of the plastic. And I'm always hesitant to really get my fingerprints on these hinges, especially when they're in a polished type finish because you know it leaves marks. Gorgeous hinge. Incredibly capable hinge in terms of the weight and the thickness of the glass it's going to handle. A lot of special features on this. So this is called a short back plate. Where, where the other back plate is basically as tall as the hinge. This is a shorter version. And what's important to know about that, certainly if you're replacing, uh, if you're replacing a hinge, I'm going to ask you to send me the dimensions of everything. Show me the height, show me the width, show me the height of the back plate as well. And you can see that that's two and three quarter. To that first hole, looks like it's about three eighths, down to about two and three eighths. The width of the plate, Two and a sixteenth, I'd say. That first hole is going to be about five sixteenths, you know, uh, four sixty five uh, five thirty seconds maybe. Um, well, no, that doesn't make sense. Seven, yeah, five thirty seconds. The next hole over is going to be about an inch and thirteen sixteenths. The height of the Vienna hinge should be about three and a half, I think. Oh, this is four. Forgive me, four inch. Overall width of the hinge, the hinge plate itself, about two and a quarter. Um, now, the glass thicknesses that this is going to work with is going to be between three eighths and a half inch. You're going to be using these larger hinges when you're touching that half inch range or three eighths. Um, you need to, and it's available in several finishes, by the way. Uh, there are, <clears throat> there's 15 finishes. I'm not going to list them. Uh, read them off here, but suffice it to say that every practical finish that you are trying to match, this will be available in, including things like gold-plated, 
Um, and all, some people like gold-plated. Uh, I think it looks great. And then all white is available. And then some of the obscure stuff, like an antique bronze, is going to be there, along with a polished chrome and polished white accents. Uh, so they've got... And then all of the regular stuff is going to be available in terms of finishes. Um, now, when you are fabricating, and I'll get people that'll say, hey, I've got this piece of glass. I need to... I want to buy this hinge. Okay, show me the prep and the glass. So when you pull up that link to the product information and cut sheet, what's most important really about that, in my opinion, is that you can accommodate the preparations that are there. Because what happens is, um, you know, if you don't have the prep, it's not going to fit. If you're doing a new installation, new glass fabrication, always do the mouse ear version. And you'll see the template, how it differs with the mouse ear version. What the mouse ear version does is it allows the height of the prep to be uh, ever so slightly, well, it's really, it's really the same overall height. But really, what really happens there is that the way in which the hinge is permitted to interact with the glass, okay, you are really able to take advantage of the fact that that area right there and right down there, it is literally shaped like that mouse ear prep. So that in the event of when, not if, your gaskets fatigue, the glass will start to creep out, and especially that thick stuff, creep out. And the mouse ear prep is going to not permit the glass to slide out of the opening. I've had people call me up and say, the gaskets are totally deteriorated. It was only hanging on the mouse ear prep. Um, and that's just, that's a lack of maintenance right there because it's been hanging out for a long time. So if you've got the ability, do the mouse ear prep for that reason alone. And then you'll see the um, clear, the regular clearance template and then the tight clearance template. That's going to be based on your opening size and how much room you're dealing with on that side of the hinge. How much room are you leaving from the wall to where your glass is going to be and then use the appropriate template because they will be different. Obviously make it tighter if possible, but you may not be able to make it tighter because of the wall construction. You might need to, you know, have it padded out a little bit further. You're, you may not have a regular sort of surface to the, to the tile or whatever you're putting it down to. You might have something holding itself off ever so slightly. So those templates are there. Use the mouse here when you can. The dimensions are there for your fabricator. Now, looking at the balance of the description, 3 8 to half inch, lots of finishes. Three-year warranty, and this is going to be polished chrome. This is, again, all solid brass. This is going to include the two uh, Phillips drive screws, and then the Allen are there with the wrench. And you would want the Allen wrench if you feel there's some possibility that there might be t easy tampering with it. Uh, people generally don't carry Allen wrenches in their pocket, might have more access to a screwdriver. If it's in your home, you know, use the one you want to use. Uh, if it was me, I'd probably use the um, I'd probably use the Allen wrench. If it was me, I'd get a better mechanical fit on the Allen wrench when I'm turning it. The Vienna hinges are the solution for wider or heavier doors, uh, where uh, traditional hinges would not be adequate. They're smaller stuff uh, in order to support it. Two strategically placed steel pins inside the hinge provide template options. And that's the mouse here we talked about. To satisfy two schools of thought for mounting shower door hinges, with or without mouse ears. On the other hand, to enable increased adjustability, the two pins can be removed. This allows the Vienna to fit in its rectangular sort of prep. Uh, square cornered cutout. In some instances, it will also fit into competitive regular shaped square cornered cutouts. And that's where it comes in to what I said earlier about the first thing I'm going to ask. Show me the prep and the glass. Tell me the size so we can figure out. Because the point of that is you may not have a C.R. Lawrence hinge that you are trying to replace. Each Vienna hinge contains a reversible pivot pin. The side of the pin is marked at 90 degree. Let's take a closer look at that. And one lesson I'll tell you about is that you want to make sure you've got the proper fitting screwdriver for removing these screws. They're generally put in a little bit too tight 
Um, and the point between manufacturer and getting to your hands, uh, those, those screws will not become <laughs> any looser in my opinion. They're put in obviously by a machine and uh, sometimes require a little bit of what my uncle, an old carpenter, would have called the killer Kowalski, get the big wrench. Um, anyway, so your plate comes out, you've got your two screws. Now that reversible pivot pin is this assembly here. And the point of that is that the um, it's set up for uh, a 90 degree sort of application so that when your door closes, you're going to be able to achieve a 90 degree close. Well, if you want it to be a little bit tighter to the jam, you can flip it around and go with the 85 degree mark. The opposite side of the pin is marked 85 degree. Standard Vienna hinges come with the 90, si 90 degree side activated. Uh, preset models come with the pin preset for 85. Five degree tighter closure into the shower in, uh, interior. The pin can be rotated, not flipped upside down to activate the other side. Now we're going to get into reversing the pivot pin, but first, these are the two pins that were referred to on your mouse ears that are talked about in the instructions and the extended description. You can literally remove these two pins if you want to not do the mouse ear prep is, is what that is important about. So we're going to reverse the pivot pins in a moment. Um, Custom pivot pins can be done as well if you have an odd angle, an oblique angle. You might have a corner unit but come out at 45 degree towards and have a center section where you're, you know, where a 90 degree pivot pin is not going to work um, at all. Obviously, using an 074 short back plate is not the hinge, the Vienna hinge you'll use, but you'd use the one that's got the clamps to the other side lights. So custom pivot pins are certainly available. Uh, those generally need to be made to order. Now, using two hinges, you're going to hold up to 100 pounds with a maximum door width of 32 inch. If you go up to three hinges, you're going to hold 130 pounds with a maximum door width of 32 inch. That stuff really needs to be observed because the glass is incredibly heavy, especially if you are attaching the hinge to a side light, the amount of weight that's hanging off of that, and if you've not braced it, you have to be incredibly mindful because glass is brittle. If you twist it, it'll move a little bit, but too far and it's point of no return. Uh, special feature, wall mount hinges and 180 degree glass to glass hinge offer a choice of a standard model, factory preset at the standard closing position, or the five degree preset model for a tighter closure into the shower enclosure, and that's really what we're talking about, where you can have that pivot pin really pushing the door up against your stop at all times to give a tight seal, and that's the important part. Again, made of solid brass, and they are a double acting. You can swing that hinge in, you can swing that hinge out. Doesn't matter, you don't have to specify, that's how they're all going to work. They are self-closing as well, self-centering or self-closing. You get within five, 15 degrees, and the hinge will just take it from there, is the bottom line. So you can kind of move, get the door basically closed, and then it'll find itself perfectly to zero. Um, and again, a cutout is required. Now the gaskets, I'm going to slice these out so we can take a look at them really quick. There's four gaskets in here. You're only going to use two, is the bottom line. There are two thick, and you're obviously going to use the thick ones for your 3 8 glass. And then there are two thin. The thin ones are going to be used for your half-inch glass. Too thin. They're black. They're neoprene. You can also, I believe, order these as clear as well, but the ones that are coming with these are black. The clear won't be neoprene. Uh, the downside of neoprene is it does fatigue sooner than uh, clear does, or the clear plastic. Vinyl is what I would say that they are. Um, the downside of the clear is that they seem to discolor. They become slightly yellow, that kind of thing. I would imagine it has everything to do with ultraviolet hitting the area. Uh, you know, if you've got lots of windows in your bathroom, you know, you might be uh, having UV uh, fatigue it. The thickness of the thicker of the two uh, gaskets is 0 .068, 0 .068, just for giving you the information. The thinner is 0 .018. 
0.018 is the thickness of those gaskets. And that's their shape. They're the same way. They've got this fin feature that's going to prevent the glass, the hinge, from making contact with the cutout in the glass. Okay. And that's how that's going to work. Now, let's move on to the reversing of the pivot pin instructions. And let's move on to that now. In order to reverse the five degree pivot pin, and there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where those instructions are listed. Simply what you do, and I've already done it, is that you remove the cover from the hinge. Remove the cover. You're going to have to remove the cover. Um, you can do it now or you can do it, you know, you can do it now or you can do it after. I've got the cover removed. Do it now or do it after this step. Take the hinge and open it either way to 90 degree. It takes a little bit of hand strength to do it. You're going to open it to 90 degree. Bear with me one moment. Okay. Once you have it open to 90 degree, there are two set screws here. This takes a, the, the Allen wrench I'm using is a two and a half millimeter, two and a half millimeter. It's not a perfect fit, but it works to the point where it won't strip, or at least didn't for me, and three millimeters is too big. So two and a half millimeter, you will loosen those screws. Let them stick out an eighth of an inch. Uh, uh, pardon me. Let them stick out a sixteenth of an inch. No more. At that point, you're going to be able to literally remove the assembly Okay. Now the installation instructions tell you to use this special wrench that they sell. Um, <clears throat> you can buy the wrench. <clears throat> you can also use a crescent wrench. Now the problem with the um, the problem with the crescent wrench is you need to be mindful to not damage the plate with the elbow of the wrench. So I'd put the curved side, and then you rotate it um, counterclockwise. So it's going to go this way. And I would get it rotated out that way. And you're going to rotate it again, because it only went 90 degrees for me. Now at that point, we didn't really notice it. But you can tell that that pin is no longer, you know, level or flat. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to put it back in the other direction. And we're going to be able to tell. Okay. Now it's straight. Well, as close as straight is going to be. You're going to have these two washers. Don't lose these. They will come off. They will fall off, but don't lose them. They will, they will come off. So the bottom line is that's how you reverse the pivot point. So you're either going to be, the bottom line is with this pivot pin, you're either going to be operating at the standard 90 degree, where the door's just going to come to a center, 90 degree. And, um, you know, that's very likely what you're going to want. Uh, you're going to want the door to be at 90 degree in line with maybe a side light panel, okay, if you've got that sort of application. But if you're doing a single, I can envision a single door, well, they're single doors, but I can envision a door that's going to have a wipe, not a wipe, but a stop strip, where you might want the door to be preloaded to the point where it's got pressure on that stop strip to give you a seal. You're going to flip it to 85 degree. It's just going to put a small amount of force because of the the there are actually springs inside of here, large springs under this plate in this housing. Um, and they are what give the pivot pin the force as it rotates. So there are springs that are pushing on these two uh, these two they're probably bird mo bird's mouth prepped, and I'm imagining what they look like, 
with a stem and then the springs fit over the stem. So as the pivot pin articulates, okay, it's got constant pressure pushing on that pivot pin. And that's, uh, and they're buried inside of here. If you remove these two screws and pulled that plate off, you're going to find those two big springs. There's no reason to take that off. Um, but when, if you were to experiment with it enough, you're going to get to the point where you will very much understand what has to happen on that. So then you don't flip the assembly over upside down. You merely turn it and for, um, you don't, you don't turn it over. You don't turn it over at all. You put it on the same way that you took it off after you've rotated that pin 180 degrees. Now I've got this all seated back down. And all I'm going to do is tighten these two screws with my two and a half, 2.5 millimeter wrench. You'll feel when it tightens and you'll, you'll, you'll feel it seat and you'll know not to go any further. You'll literally feel it in your hands. Now, at that point, I'm locked into place. Nothing's going to happen. I've got that you can tell that it's canted. So for this sort of installation, you know, that might be a perfect installation for what you're doing. Depending on, you know, I mean, you can literally see how it's set. Well, you may not see it so well there, but to my eyes, it's clearly not 90 degree. Okay. So there you go. Um, we're going to reset that back because the client will be receiving this hinge. Ouch. He will have one that's already at 80 degree, and we don't want him to have to realize, oh gosh, one hinge works, the other doesn't. Because I don't think this person is in the shower door business. Pull that off. We're going to rotate it. It's saying counterclockwise. Ninety degree. Get it set back the way that it was. And um, and it's very simple stuff is basically what it is. I've got it seated back the way it was. I'm going to tighten the screw back up and it will certainly serve to draw that all in. There we go. Perfect. Making sure the margin down here on the pivot pin is tight and not hanging out like that. I'm pulling it down so that there's no margin, you know, no, no, no gap there. I'm going to tighten up my screws. Good. Now, you may have, you may not have noticed it before, but that is completely 90 degrees straight. No problem with that at all. You know, there's, there's a, there's going to be the correct way to put it on and then the other way. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Um, two little uh, plastic bushings are for those mouse ear pins that you can remove again if you need to, if you want to. You very likely will remove them. I'm going to put my plate back on. I've got my two Phillips screws here that I'm going to put right back in. And what's really, again, great about C.R. Lawrence products uh, on their shower door stuff is that it's made of solid brass. Now, obviously, it's not all 100% brass. But the, but the parts that are getting the architectural finishes, those are brass. And brass being an architectural metal permits an exceptionally good finish. So all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take my nasty fingerprints off and we're going to call it a day. Beautiful piece of hardware. Now, finally, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the C.R. Lawrence products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. If you have any questions on the C.R. Lawrence Vienna 074 hinge or any other C.R. Lawrence product, feel free to reach out to us. Um, if you're designing a shower enclosure, I would very much recommend that you review their product catalog because of the incredible diversity in options that there are. There, I, I'm not going to say that there are 20 hinges, but there's probably 20 hinges. 
And I, you know, if you're designing something, take the time and review all of it. You might say the Vienna hinge is overkill. It's just too large. I don't like that hinge. You might like uh, the Vienna, uh, pardon me, you might like the uh, Geneva, another city, uh, more for whatever reason that you may prefer it, but at least you'll have the ability to review it prior to making a final decision. Uh, that catalog, it's going to be called the shower door catalog and is there for that, uh, to allow you to review all that stuff. It's overwhelming. If you're building a shower enclosure, let your glass guy do it. Tell them, show me three different hinges, pick one of them. If you want to dive deep and go after it, go after it. Click on the shower door hardware catalog and dive in. You're gonna, you'll certainly find it to be not a waste of time. You might also say, oh, too much information. Uh, but if you're an installer, an industry professional, you're probably already familiar with it. If you have any questions on the Vienna, the Sierra Lawrence Vienna 074 hinge and a polished chrome finish, or any other CR Lawrence product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.